Our next topic is international trade and capital flows. End of chapter questions. Question number one. Which of the following statements best describes the benefits of international trade? First, countries gain from exchange and specialization. This is very true. This is the benefit of international trade. Countries receive lower prices for their exports and pay higher prices for imports. And this is incorrect. When there is trade between the countries and when a country gets benefits from international trade, it should result in higher prices for exported goods and it should result lower prices for imported goods. So this basically would lead to more efficient resource allocation and it should allow consumption of larger variety of goods, uh, more variety would be available for consumers globally. So this is incorrect basically. See, absolute advantage is required for a country to benefit from trade in the long term. This is incorrect. Comparative advantage is required, not absolute advantage. So this is also an incorrect statement. So that makes A to be the correct option. Next. Which of the following statements best describes the costs of international trade? Or you can say the disadvantage of international trade. A. Countries without an absolute advantage in producing a good cannot benefit significantly from international trade. This is incorrect. You have to have comparative advantage, not absolute advantage. This is the statement itself is incorrect. Neither benefit nor a disadvantage or a cost. B. Resources may need to be allocated into or out of an industry and less efficient companies may be forced to exit in an industry which in turn may lead to higher unemployment. This is a disadvantage of international trade and hence it is the cost of international trade. This is true. Resources may be reallocated into or out of an industry. So this would uh, result in adjustment process where less efficient companies, they may be closed and which in turn, of course, may lead to higher unemployment and the need for retaining in order for displaced workers to find jobs in expanding industry. So this is true. This is the cost of international trade. B is the right option. Now why not see loss of manufacturing jobs in developed countries as a result of import competition as far as up to this point the statement is correct means that developed countries benefit far less than developing countries from trade. This is debatable. This is wrong. Developed countries benefit far less than developing countries. This is incorrect. Developed countries can produce at low cost and then they can exchange those goods and services where they have the comparative advantage. So this part is, is incorrect, which makes option C incorrect. Hence, the right option is option B. Okay, question number three. Suppose the cost of producing tea relative to copper is lower in tea land than in copper land. With trade, the copper industry in copper land would most likely, now see, uh, tea land can produce tea at a relatively lower cost than copper land in copper. Uh, and copper land can produce copper at a lower cost than tea. So, which means then these countries can trade and they will benefit both. So, what will happen? The copper land will expand in copper and the tea land they will expand in tea. The copper industry in copper land, it would benefit from trade because the cost of producing copper in the copper land is relatively lower than in tea land. Likewise, so copper land will export copper and tea land will produce tea at a lower cost than copper land. So tea land will export tea. So both will benefit. So tea will expand in tea land and copper industry will expand in copper land. That makes A to be the correct option. A country has a comparative advantage in producing a good if it is able to produce the good at lower cost than its trading partner. Well, it's not the cost that is looked at. 
it is basically the lower opportunity cost of producing the good right so a country has a comparative advantage in producing a good if its opportunity cost of producing the good is less than that of its trading partner this is the right description of comparative advantage and that makes b to be the correct talk because comparative advantage is present when the opportunity cost of producing a good is less than that of a trading partner that makes uh, b to be the correct option okay next question suppose mexico exports vegetables to brazil and imports flashlights used for mining from brazil the output per worker per day in each country is as follows mexico produces 12 flashlights and 60 vegetables whereas brazil produces 40 flashlights and 80 vegetables if you look at the numbers brazil has absolute advantage why because it can produce more flashlights and more vegetables than mexico right now which country has a comparative advantage in production of vegetables and what is the most relevant opportunity cost if you just look at this 20 to 60 right if you divide both part of this fraction by 20 what you get is 1 ratio 3 what does it mean it means that if one flashlight is given up mexico can produce three vegetables and if we do the same with brazil divide 40 with both sides what you get is 1 ratio 2 so if one flashlight is given up mexico can produce three vegetables whereas if one flashlight is given up in brazil it can only produce two vegetables which means now it is good for mexico to shift its productive resources in the production of vegetables because vegetables are more efficiently produced or we can do it this way 60 60 80 right so in this case is going to be 1 1/3 it's going to be 1 1 2 so in this case as you opportunity cost of producing one vegetable is one third flashlight so mexico's relevant opportunity cost is one third flashlight per vegetable that makes c to be the correct option next suppose three countries produce bananas and pencils with output per worker per day in each country as follows mexico can produce 20 bananas 40 pencils 30 bananas brazil 90 pencils and 40 bananas 160 pencils which country has the greatest comparative advantage in the production of bananas if you just see the fraction it's 1 ratio 2 1 ratio 3 1 ratio 4 so mexico just has to give up two banana pencils to to uh, produce one banana uh, brazil will have to give up three pencils for one banana and canada will have to give up four pencils for one banana so in this case the comparative advantage the greatest comparative advantage in the production of bananas is with mexico and that makes c to be the correct option next question in the ricardian trade model a country captures more of the gains from trade if it produces all products while its trade partner specializes in one good then one there when then what is the benefit there in trade is incorrect option when the where is the comparative advantage b the terms of trade are closer to its atokic prices than its partners atokic prices atokic prices are the market clearing prices in an economy the prices are the lowest just cover the cost of production so you are selling just at your cost of production then how would it benefit you this is incorrect the terms of trade are closer to its partners atokic prices then to atokic prices means that you are purchasing the goods and services at nearly the cost of production of your trading partner so in this case uh, the the country will capture more gains the terms of trade are closer to your partner's market clearing prices than to your own atokic prices so that makes c to be the correct option germany has uh, much more capital per worker than portugal means germany's capital intensive compared to portugal in atoki each country produces and consumes both machine tools and wine 
production of machine tools is relatively capital intensive for which germany is a better uh, country whereas wine making is labor intensive for which portugal is a better country according to hacksher ohlen model when trade opens germany should export machine tools yes because it is uh, more capital intensive it has more capital per worker and portugal should export wine that makes perfect sense because in hacksher's ohlen model a country has a comparative advantage in goods whose production is intensive in those factors with which it has a relative abundance like capital per worker is higher in germany so they should focus focus on machine whereas portugal should then focus on export of wine so that makes a to be the correct option according to the hacksher's ohlen model when trade opens we just discussed the abundant factor gains relative to the scarce factor in each economy like in germany capital intensivity per worker is higher so capital intensivity gains whereas in portugal the labor intensivity was in abundance so it gained so the abundant factor gains relative to the scarce factor in each country that is a perfectly straightforward question that makes b to be the correct option which of the trade restrictions would most likely increase domestic government revenue clearly tariff is the custom or the import taxation imposition of tariff will increase domestic government revenues a tariff basically is the tax on imported goods and uh, this is the tax collected by the government means the government's revenue would increase that's a straightforward question next which of the following trade restrictions is likely to result in the greatest welfare loss for the importing country a tariff well this this will be a source of revenue for the government an import quota restriction of physical quantity in a country so this will not affect the importing country but if there is a voluntary export restraint imposed by the exporting country and resultantly there is an increase in price in the importing country so the benefit of this will be in favor of exporting country and this would result in a loss greatest welfare loss for the importing country so that that c c is the right option a large country can like china when a country is large very large then it can produce whatever it wants it is big enough to affect the world price of its imports and exports so such a country can improve its uh, its terms of trade and to uh, to reverse loss arising from inefficient allocation of resources by just imposing tariffs so that that's a is the right answer if brazil and south africa have free trade with each other a common trade policy against all other countries but no free movement of factors of production between them then brazil and south africa are a part of a well let us first move from the least integrated to the most integrated first free trade area no tariffs between members no external tariffs and uh, countries can negotiate own trade deals one step further more integration customs union no tariffs no border checks common external tariff and trade deals for whole customs union and finally this is the most integrated common market no tariffs common external tariff freedom of movement good and people and common rules and regulations now where does this arrangement falls brazil south africa there is a free trade with each other common trade policies against all other countries but no free movement of factors of production it in custom unions because custom union extends from free trade area by not only allowing free movement of goods and services among members but also creating common trade policy against non members so whereas uh, in common markets there is more integration so common markets they allow free movement of factors of production among members but custom unions do not allow free movement of factors of production that's makes 
A to be the correct option. Which of the following factors best explains why regional trading agreements are more popular than larger multilateral trade agreements? Well, uh, regional trading agreements, they are quicker to set up. There is easier policy coordination rather than uh, larger multilateral trade agreement. They might take years of deliberations and then finally contracts are entered into. But regional trading agreements are more popular because they are quicker and easier policy coordination. They can be, they, the policy coordination and harmonization is much easier among a smaller group of countries. So that makes C to be the correct option. Uh, the sale of mineral rights would be captured in which of the following balance of payment components? Well, clearly it's a capital account. The capital account measures capital transfers and sale and purchase of non-produced, non-financial assets such as mineral rights and intangible assets. Next is the correct option. Patent fee and legal services are recorded in which of the following balance of payment components? It's not capital, rather it's current account because current account will show uh, the flows of goods and services, income from foreign investment, patent fee, legal services, they're all captured within the sub-account of current account. So that's B. Next question. During the most recent quarter, a steel company in South Korea had the following transactions bought iron ore from Australia for Australian dollars 50 million. Uh, this is clearly reflected in the capital account of the balance of payment. Sold finished goods to United States for US dollars 65 million. This is a component of current account. Borrowed Australian dollar 50 million from a bank in Sydney in Australia. This is clearly is a part of financial account. Received US dollar 10 million dividends from US subsidiary. This is a part of your current account. And paid Korean 550 million to a Korean shipping company. This is within the country, so it's not reflected on the balance of payment. So, which of the following would be reflected in South Korea's current account? Loan, it's financial. Shipping, within the within Korea, so it's, it can't be reflected on the balance of payments. So the dividends, yes. Received 10 million dividends from US subsidiary, it's reflected in the current account. That makes C to be the correct option. Next, which of the following most likely contribute to a current account deficit? A current account deficit can arise from three things. First, low private savings high private investment and a government deficit or any combination of these. So it's going to be low private savings. That makes B to be the correct option. Look no further. Which of the following chronic deficit conditions is least alarming to the deficit country's creditors? Well, as just discussed in the previous slide here, uh, low private savings, high private investments, and more government spending, and low government saving, they can result in current account deficit. And out of these, out of these three, if you ask me which of these is uh, something that the creditors will be comfortable with, this. Why? Because High investments can increase productive resources and it will improve future ability to repay creditors. So that means high private investment is the right option B. Next. Which of the following international trade organizations regulate cross-border exchange among nations on a global scale? Look no further. This is World Trade Organization. It provides the legal and institutional foundation of the multinational trading system and is the only international organization that regulates cross-border trade relations among nations on a global scale. Next, 
which is the following international trade organization has a mission to help developing countries fight poverty and enhance environmentally sound economic policies uh, this is of course world bank group world bank the world bank's mission statement is or mission is to help developing countries fight poverty and enhance environmentally sound economic growth so how does it work the world bank will help to create the basic economic infrastructure mostly in african countries essential for creation and maintenance of domestic financial markets and well functioning financial industry in the poorer countries so that makes a to be the correct option which of the following organizations helps to keep global systemic risk under control by preventing contagion dominoes effect in scenarios such as 2010 greek sovereign debt crisis well that's the domain of international monetary fund imf helps to keep country specific market risk and global systemic risk under control the mission of imf is to ensure the stability of international monetary system that's the system of exchange rates and international payments which enable countries to buy goods and services from each other then the last question then your eocs would be over c is the right option Which of the following international trade bodies was the only multilateral body governing international trade from 1948 to 1995? That was General Agreement on Tariff and Trade. That's GATT. It was the only multilateral body governing international trade between this time period, and then it was subsequently replaced by the World Trade Organization. So, it operated for almost uh, 50 years, and then. it was replaced by voltio so that makes c to be the correct option and that ends your reading international trade and capital flows eocs